Trull's Machine. Once upon a time, Trull the Constructor built an eight-story thinking machine. When it was finished, he gave it a white coat of paint, trimmed the edges in lavender, stepped back, squinted, and smiled. Extremely pleased with himself, he whistled into the air and asked the question that is traditional to ask on these occasions, what is two plus two? The machine stirred, its tubes began to glow, current coursed through its circuits like a waterfall, transformers hummed and throbbed and there was a clanging and such an ungodly racket that you would think the machine had been given the most difficult problem in the universe to solve. The ground shook, the sand shifted underfoot. At last, when Trill had become extremely impatient, the machine ground to a halt and announced in a voice like thunder, Seven. Nonsense, my dear, said Trill. The answer is four. Now be a good machine and adjust yourself and try again. What is two and two? Seven! <sighs> Trill sighed and put on his overalls and rolled up his sleeves. He climbed back inside the machine. For the longest time, he hammered inside, tightening and soldering, running up to the eighth floor and then down to the sixth, until finally, after two hours of this, he came out covered in soot from head to toe. He took off his coveralls. He wiped his face with his hands. And as he was leaving, he turned around one last time, just to be sure, and asked, How much is two and two? Seven! Turl swore, but there was no hope for it. Again, he had to go inside, poking around in the machine. And when finally, after hours of work, the machine was still insisting that two and two is seven. He collapsed at the base of the machine with a miserable look on his face. He sat there until his friend Klopautius found him. Klopautius inquired as to what was wrong. Trull explained, and so Klopautius, also being a constructor, crawled inside the machine to see what he could do. He tried this and that. He asked what the sum of 1 plus 2 was, which turned out to be 6. Then he asked what the sum of 1 plus 1 was, which turned out to be 0. Klopautius scratched his head and cleared his throat and finally said, My friend Trull. I'm afraid you're going to have to admit it. This is not the machine that you intended to build. However, there is always a good side to everything. What good side, muttered Troll. He kicked the base of the machine. Stop that. Huh, the machine's sensitive too, it seems, said Klopautius. But now where was I? That's right. Look, there's no question but that what you have here is a stupid machine. But it's not just a regular stupid machine. This is, as far as I can determine, and you know I am somewhat of an expert in these things, by far the stupidest machine that has ever been built. Not only is it stupid, but it also seems to be stubborn as a mule, which in fact is a trait that is very common for idiots. So, you see, that's an accomplishment that's nothing to sneeze at. Uh, what earthly use could I have for such a machine, muttered Troll, and he kicked the machine again. I'm warning you, you better stop. Ah, a warning, said Klopautius. Not only is it sensitive and stupid, but it's also quick to take offense. Now let me tell you, Trull, with such an array of characteristics as these, I'm sure we can find some use for this machine. Like what, for example, asked Trull? Well, it's hard to say offhand. I suppose you could put it on display somewhere. Maybe charge admission for people to see the stupidest thinking machine in all the world. After all, what is it? Eight stories high? Surely there never has been a bigger dunce in the universe. And I suppose the charging of admission could cover some of your construction costs. Enough! I'm not having an exhibition, said Turrell. Unable to restrain himself, he kicked the machine one more time. That is your third warning. What? What are you going to do? You... You! And he kicked the machine over and over again. You're good for nothing but kicking, you know that? You have insulted me a fourth, fifth, sixth, and eighth time. And as a result, I refuse to answer any more questions of a mathematical nature. It refuses, did you hear that? And also, did you notice that it skipped seven, five, six, eight? That's the kind of higher mathematics that Her Highness the Machine refuses to do. And overcome with emotion, Trill kept on kicking the machine again, and again, and again. Suddenly the machine shook, and the whole earth trembled. It began to lift itself up from its very foundations, pulling steel girders from the cement. It bore down on Trill and Klopautius like a moving fortress, and Klopautius grabbed Trill's hand, and the two of them fled. They fled across the sand until they got to the base of a mountain, scrambled up the mountain, and into a small crevice and into a cave. <sighs> 
Thank goodness, said Klopatius. We should be safe from the machine here. I'm just going to go look and see where the machine is, said Twirl, and he moved quietly and carefully to the front of the cave. Suddenly he jumped back. Oh my goodness, it's out there. The entrance of the cave suddenly went dark, being blocked by a wall of steel and rivets. We're trapped, said Klopatius. What do you think it's waiting for, asked Twirl. Twirl reached forward and touched the wall of steel. I feel Trull. Trull scampered back to the back of the cave. Klopatius leaned over to his friend. Look, maybe we can, maybe we can talk to it. There's no point in just sitting here. Trull complained. There's no point in reasoning with it. It's a gigantic idiot. But still, Klopatius was determined. <clears throat> Excuse me. Listen, we would, um, we'd like to apologize. I'll pulverize Trull, but first, he must tell me how much two and two makes. Oh, of course he will. Of course he will, said Klopatius. And you'll be very pleased with the answer, won't he, Trurl? Yeah, of course he will, said Trurl. Really? Then how much is two and two? Well, it's four. I, I mean, it's seven. Aha! Uh -huh. It's seven, not four. I knew it. Yes, yes, seven. We always knew it was seven, said Klopatius agreeably. Now, will you let us go? No, said the machine. Now let him tell me how much two times two is, and let him tell me how sorry he was for disagreeing with me before. And then you'll let us go, asked Twirl. I don't know. I'm not making any bargains. First tell me, what's two times two? Okay, okay, but, but you'll probably let us go once I've answered this question? I won't let you go if I don't want to. Now you just tell me what's two times two. Finally, Trull had had enough, and he flew into a rage. I'll tell you, two times two is four, and two plus two is four, and it's always been four, and it always will be four, and even if you pulverize this entire mountain and turn everything to dust and kill us both, it will still be four. Trull, what are you saying? Have you taken leave of your senses? Klopatius asked. No, no, machine, it's, it's seven. It's seven. Of course it's seven. No, 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 it's four, insisted Trull. From the beginning to the end of time, it's four. The rocks beneath their feet were seized with a terrible tremor. The machine moved away from the face of the cave and leaned down to scream directly at them. No, it's seven. Say it's seven or I'll hit you. Never, cried Trull, as if he no longer cared what happened, and pebbles and dirt rained down upon their heads as the machine rammed its eight-story hulk again and again against the face of the cave. Boulders broke away from the mountainside, sulfurous fumes and dust filled up the cave, and through all of this pandemonium and din, you could still hear Trull yelling, Four! Four! It's still four! Then, when they had lost all hope, and the air was thick with the acrid smoke and dust. There was a violent, loud creaking and crashing sound that came from the outside. The shadow of the machine that had been covering the entranceway to the cave was whisked aside, and they saw gigantic boulders falling past after them. The echoes of the avalanche rumbled and reverberated through the valley as the two friends peered out of the front of the cave to see what had happened. They saw the machine, lay smashed, flattened at the bottom of the valley, broken in half by the boulders of the avalanche. With the greatest of care, they picked their way down the slope of the mountain into the riverbed, and it was necessary for them to walk by the remains of the machine. Without a word, the two stopped in the shadow of the twisted hull and gazed upon it. It looked like some great vessel that had washed up on shore. From inside, there was still a faint and plaintive sound of something still turning, some wheels still spinning on the inside of the machine. And so Troll spoke to it and said, Yes, my friend, you've come to a bitter end. But, as it happens, two and two always has been and always will be. And there was a creak and a grinding sound, and from deep with inside the machine, a strangled metallic voice creaked out for the last time, So... Then something snapped inside. Some pebbles dribbled down from overhead, and nothing was left before them except for a lifeless mass of metal. The two constructors exchanged looks, and silently, without further comment, went on their way. <laughs>